Welcome to this edition of Inside NCI. I'm Dr. Rick Manro with NCI's Office of Communications and Education, and joining us today is Dr. Barry Kramer. Dr. Kramer is the former Associate Director of the Office of Disease Prevention at NIH, and he is the current Editor-in-Chief of NCI's Physician Data Query, or PDQ, Cancer Screening and Prevention Editorial Board. Welcome, Barry. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. Randomized controlled trials really provide the gold standard evidence for evaluating medical interventions. Which of the more commonly used cancer screening tests have been tested in randomized controlled trials and found to reduce cancer mortality or reduce the number of deaths from cancer, and which have not? So there um, are uh, several cancers that have been shown to be successfully screened uh, with a net benefit compared to harm. Clearly, pap smears um, do decrease the risk of death from cervical cancer. Other trials that have shown definitive benefit that outweighs harms are testing for occult blood in the stool. They are called fecal occult blood tests, or FOBT. And each of four trials that has randomly assigned people to FOBT versus control have shown that you decrease the risk of dying of colorectal cancer. More recently, there has been a landmark trial, a randomized study of 60 centimeter flexible sigmoidoscopy done in the United Kingdom. And they've just reported that uh, it decreases the risk of dying of colon cancer. What about mammography screening? Mammography has also been established um, as an effective test. I think there's very little controversy based on the existing seven or eight trials. The controversy really centers on what is the risk-benefit ratio at specific ages. Messages to the public about cancer screening almost uniformly state that uh, detecting cancer early through screening saves lives, but that's not always true, is it? Too frequently, a very complex information is summarized in sound bites, and this is an area that doesn't lend itself very well to sound bites. Often, the screening results are much more nuanced. Plus, all screening tests are going to have some downsides. In general, could you describe some of the harms that are associated with cancer screening? It's often stated that seven things can happen to you if you are screened for cancer. Five of them are bad and two of them are good. Of course, the two good ones are that it will decrease the morbidity of having treatment and it will decrease your risk of dying of cancer. In exchange for that, some people suffer side effects. Screening is intended to diagnose cancer early in people who have no symptoms, and in so doing, it can label some people, and that has consequences, uh, both in terms of employment, insurance, and so forth. There are also false positives. Since cancer itself is such a fearsome disease, even a test that is falsely positive and suggests that a healthy person has cancer when they don't is extremely anxiety provoking and can trigger many diagnostic tests. There are also false negatives, that is a, a test can miss a cancer that is there. Uh, one side effect that is not common but probably the most serious of all is a phenomenon called overdiagnosis. Overdiagnosis occurs when a patient who has cancer does have a positive screening test, but that, screen, that cancer is so slow growing that it never would have harmed the person in their life, natural lifespan. Nevertheless, it triggers invasive tests and triggers invasive therapy, sometimes harmful therapies such as major surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Finally, I'd like to ask you what advice you'd have for someone who's considering cancer screening. It's always best to be informed when you're dealing with a medical procedure that has potential harms um, and actually unavoidable harms. So one might ask, what's the best way to get informed? I think PDQ, Physician Data Query, is a wonderful source for both patients and physicians, which has descriptions of almost all of the screening tests that are being advertised to the public. And the other source of information that I think is very, very useful in making a personal decision is available through the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and it is called the United States Preventive Services Task Force. It covers a very broad range of prevention and screening tests. 
Well, I really want to thank you for joining us today, Barry. This has been extremely interesting and informative. For more information about cancer screening and PDQ, please visit NCI's website, www.cancer.gov. For Inside NCI, I'm Dr. Rick Manrow.